All right, next step in our Sigmarine. <laughs> um, we will continue with the blue of the shoulder pad. Mm -hmm. um, you can see I've, um, while preparing the miniature, I've just used my exacto knife to add some scratches to the yeah. surface. Uh, because I want uh, the uh, like blue painted parts to be weathered and battle damaged. Mm. Yeah, in the original kit it comes with um, um, decals even um, for the shoulder pad. I don't even know what were the decals in there for the mm. plastic set. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. So uh, we'll just uh, make it pretty other way, <laughs> otherwise. All right, you can see I've rearranged the palette to get the blues here to the front so I can access them more easily. And um, uh, yeah, I'm mixing some of the uh, model color blue, uh, model color air blue, with some black and some white. You can see on the palette I have a little bit darker here on the on this side and a little bit lighter the same blue here on that side. Mm -hmm. So pretty much already to create like a little gradient there. Yeah. This way it's quite easy to just pick up the blue we need. Mm -hmm. And we, I just took some of the lighter one and start by giving it the first uh, base layer. Yeah, I think that's uh, as we mentioned also on the on some of the other parts. This is very characteristic of your work, where you, um, like in this case, you have the black uh, foundation, and you just go with a almost maximum highlight color on top of that, just to create a lot of contrast early on. Of course, the sides don't look that great right now, <laughs> but I'm sure that you have an idea on how to fix that. Yeah, we just need to let that dry. Yeah, yeah, it's still pretty warm. It's not as hot as the last couple of days. Um, Paint is drying rather quickly, but I'm going to probably use a hair dryer to speed that up. Yeah. Can you maybe also show the consistency right now on your fingernail or something? Yeah, one second. So that's always important, the consistency of paint. See? Most people use way too thick paint. Um, this is a so-called layer consistency. It's uh, still shining a little bit through. It's not glaze, where it's almost uh, homeopathic. <laughs> So uh, that's that, that's definitely something to play around with a little bit, the different consistencies of, of paint. And now it's even a thinner mix of uh, medium tone just to soft things out here to the sides. And now we start to uh, draw in smaller highlights uh, such as here on the border just on that edge Softing that out here. Yeah. You can see that blendings are actually very, very easy if you do it this way. Just create a strong contrast and use an intermediate tone between whatever the highlight color was and the underlying color. Uh, soft out the edges in a thinner mix and you're pretty good to go. Okay, again, and just with a soft medium tone, very thin, just glazing over the top highlight to soft it out a bit. Of course, depending on what you want to do on top there, um, you can go for very, very smooth or just even leave it a little bit rough and just uh, 
kind of hide the roughnesses with uh, scratches and stuff. Yeah. Um, as I said, I want mine to be pretty weathered. That yeah. is just perfect as a stage to to add the weathering now. Mm -hmm. um, I won't add any any symbol or anything here. Mm -hmm. um, if that would be a competition piece, I would go for for a free end here. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, I think the the um, decals are flashes. So. But. Uh, Again, it's very space marine. <laughs> um, for the dark scratches, I'm mixing some uh, tank brown and some black. I'm just trying to get some dark lines here in the recesses that I've created with a knife. Here it's important that it's a little random, that it's not like all in the same direction, all of the same size, these kind of things. Yeah. So always important when doing scratches. Um, another nice effect um, you, can, you can achieve when you do the uh, scratches with, with a knife is that you can just poke in a little in the surface with a knife and bend a bit of the plastic out so you have a raised border like that. Mm. Yeah, that's what you've done there. You can actually see it uh, by the way you use your brush. You're using the side of the brush to highlight that edge. It's, uh, of course, it's on a 2D, it's not that visible. Now, uh, today is a new day. Um, today is Tuesday, and uh, we're finishing this off uh, in the next couple of hours. Um, but just uh, so that you know that uh, these kind of things occupy our minds all the time, I actually dreamt that Games Workshop featured this video on their website. <laughs> yeah, like that's going to happen. But um, that was a good dream. <laughs> Okay, um, so far for the scratches, I think they look already pretty nice and quite random. I just want to highlight the one here on the top a bit more because it's more exposed to the sunlight. And note how Ben uses uh, different thicknesses of uh, highlight lines, not like the same thickness all under the, the line. Also interrupted. It's little little things like that that just make a difference between a, a simple scratch, like we've all learned it in the beginning, <laughs> and a showcase level scratch. Master scratch. <laughs> Master scratch. <laughs> Master scratcher. All right. To increase the depth and also make it look even a bit more weathered, uh, we'll apply glazes of, uh, of brown, tank brown. Mm -hmm. And make sure you use the color really thin because uh, the tank brown will also change the the glossiness of the the surface mm. and it's a very intense color so yeah, that's one of the things that uh, if you keep um, mixing and matching paints uh, if you're not just using paints from one brand. Even there, there's sometimes an issue, but mostly not, uh, is that um, all of these paints have different properties, as we call them, um, and especially when it comes to glossiness. So um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. It's also good to note uh, to learn about these uh, properties of your paints, because sometimes you want a shiny surface and then you want a matte surface, for example. 
and uh, let's say if it's a matte surface you want to go for scale 75 paints or very specific techniques of how to get something matte um, if you want something more glossy uh, you can go with the um, the Games Workshop colors of course which have excellent pigmentation um, and then all of the other colors as well we'll also add a bit of the um uh, the scrofulous brown that we used for the gold um, to create a more orange brown to get, give it a little bit of rust. And as we see it now, it's like especially when painting or when using very thin glazes, um, try to push the pigments in the direction you want them to end up. Because uh, especially when it's thin, um, the pigments at the end of the brush stroke will be most visible. You might have noticed that Ben already painted the sword on the side. Uh, the reason for that is it uh, was almost impossible to show on camera because the hammer is in front of it. Yeah, I, uh, I had to maneuver in like that anyway, so uh, it was not really uh, fun to, to paint in ca on cam. Yeah. So uh, we decided to do that off cam, but we will show you the uh, all the non-metal techniques as well here. Yeah. Also the same colors. Uh, we'll yeah, plus it was, it was gold again. I mean, we've seen a lot of gold already, so. True. All right. But yeah, that's it uh, for the nice little weather shoulder mm part. -hmm. Um, we will continue with the blue tones um, on on the um, long cloth. Mm -hmm. And I decided to paint the upper part, the flaps here, not not in blue. <gasps> heresy. Heresy. Because it's... <laughs> uh, Pre-pre-heresy. <laughs> Because it's uh, just really a lot uh, blue on the model, yeah. and I think it would be a nice touch to to add more red to the mm -hmm. model, um, but not really straight red. We will uh, go for a tank brown, mm -hmm. and this lower part here will be non-metal silver with interspersed with some uh, gold plates. Mm. All right. Well, we'll do that in the next take. Okay.